All right, thanks for watching. And so someone on YouTube, they asked you a very interesting question. They asked, are there any functions whose derivative gives you the inverse function? So it's kind of interesting kind of differential equation. And I won't show you all of them. I don't know if there are others as well, but I will definitely give you like two examples of such functions. And the answer is very surprising. So be excited. <laughs> and here's some little motivation. Well, let's think about what kinds of functions we have. You know, we have exponential functions, but like, e to the x, the derivative e to the x, the inverse is ln of x, probably doesn't satisfy those things. Or, you know, sine, the derivative is cosine, the inverse is arc sine, probably also not a good class of functions to try. However, how about we just go back and try for power functions? So let's try f of x equals to a x to the b. And that's actually a very common technique in differential equations. Just try it out and see if it works. Okay, on the other hand, on the one hand, if you calculate the derivative, you get a b x to the b minus one. And let's also quickly calculate the inverse. So y equals to a x to the b, you divide by a and take the bth root, you get x equals to y over a to the one over b. And I'm assuming as the inverse will take the positive root and stuff, so let's not, let's do a formal argument here. So, on the one hand, f prime is a b x to the b minus one. On the other hand, f inverse of x, if you swap x and y, is x over a to the 1 over b. So in particular, if we ask, is the derivative equal to the inverse, that means that a b x to the b minus 1 equals to x to the 1 over b and a to the 1 over b. And now let's just cross multiply this, so what we get is a to the 1 plus 1 over b, b, x to the b minus 1 equals to x to the 1 over b. And look, they're both power functions, and well, two power functions are equal if and only if their exponents are equal and the coefficients are equal. So in particular, if you take the exponents, they have to be equal. So b minus 1 equals to 1 over b. I can cross multiply. That gives you b squared minus b equals to 1. So b squared minus b minus 1 equals to 0. And Lo and behold, if you take the quadratic formula, this gives you b equals to 1 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. And some of you might recognize this as the golden ratio. Whoa. So 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 is the golden ratio, and 1 minus square root of 5 over 2, if you want it, 1 minus b. That's one thing, so that actually solves for b. So it turns out, in order to have such a function, you need uh, x to the golden ratio, which is pretty cool. And the other question is, what about the coefficients? Well, here the coefficient is one. So the coefficients are equal, and therefore, uh, we can solve for a. On the other hand, so a to the 1 plus 1 over b, b equals to 1. That said, remember that, you know, um, well, not remember that, let's do it. Uh, turns out 1 plus 1 over b, that's the same thing as uh, 
is P plus 1 over D. Sorry, I'm silly, but... And the question is, what is 1 plus 1 over B? Well, remember, B minus 1 is 1 over B. And so, B is 1 plus 1 over B. Or in other words, 1 plus 1 over B is B. No, not the Bs. Okay. <laughs> so, A to the B times B equals to 1. Um, so, A to the B is 1 over B, which is B minus 1, again. And therefore, what happens is that A is the Bth root of B minus 1. And if you want, that's the same thing as b minus 1 to the b minus 1 power. Which is great because we know what b is, we know what a is, and now we just have to do it in cases. What if b is phi and what if you know, b is 1 minus phi? So case 1. If b is phi, then we get one solution, f of x is just b minus 1, so phi minus 1 uh, to the phi minus 1, x to the phi. And if b is 1 minus phi, then f of x, so b minus 1 becomes minus phi, so minus phi to the minus phi of x to the, so b minus 1, um, sorry, x to the b is just uh, 1 minus phi. Ta-da! So indeed, we get, here I gave you two functions whose derivative is the inverse, and notice in particular, this answer is negative, so in fact, it's a complex solution. So we have one real solution and exactly one complex solution. And it's important that conjugate isn't necessarily a solution because our differential equation was a super nonlinear differential equation. And I guess just to waste your time, let's just check that this is indeed true. In case you don't believe me, it's like the appendix if you want. So on the one hand, let's see. So f of x is, let's take this, phi minus 1 to the phi minus 1 x to the phi. Let's calculate the derivative. So f prime of x is phi minus 1 to the phi minus 1 phi x to the phi minus 1. On the other hand, what about the inverse? Well, basically you divide by phi minus 1 to the phi minus 1. And then you take the phi root of this. So x, everything to the 1 over phi, which becomes 1 over phi to the 1 over phi. Doesn't really look like it's the same, but it is actually the same. Because remember, we had, you know, 1 over b is the same as b minus 1. So 1 over phi is the same as phi minus 1. And now let's see what happens here. So this, if you want, becomes phi minus 1 to the phi minus 1 times minus 1 over phi. But if you want, minus 1 over b is the same as 1 uh, minus b. So that's 1 minus phi. And then we get x to the phi minus 1 times phi minus 1 times, let's see, um, Foil it out, so we get phi minus 1, and then phi minus 1 of minus, let's see, uh, phi minus 1, then minus phi squared plus phi. You know, lots of phi's, but we're not in phi mix, so. <laughs> uh, so what happens then? If you take the equation of b, let's see here, uh, b squared minus b equals to 1, so minus b squared plus b is minus 1, 
So this becomes minus 1, and then you're just left with x to the phi minus 1, phi minus 1 to the phi minus 1 of, I guess, 1 over phi minus 1. But now, if you take this thing here, so if you want 1 over phi equals to phi minus 1, and take the reciprocal, if you take 1 over that, you indeed get 1 over phi minus 1 equals to phi. And so you're left with phi times phi minus 1 to the phi minus 1, x to the phi minus 1. So it turns out, you know, if you compare those two, after those magical simplifications, we indeed get f prime equals to f inverse. So how cool is that? And you can also try it for the other thing, but I think it might be too bored by now. Um, but just one little thing, so we found two solutions. Uh, I don't know if those are all of them, but my guess is yes, and the reason is, look, right, we tried to solve the differential equation f prime equals to f inverse, and if you differentiate that once more, you get f double prime, and remember the uh, derivative of f inverse is 1 over f. Again, 1 over f may be something like uh, evaluated f, f inverse or something. Which indeed is a, a second order differential equation. And it's not guaranteed that there are always two solutions, but just my hunch is because it's a second order differential equation, there might not be other solutions. But again, this is just super hand wavy. All right, so if you like that and you want to see more weird math, uh, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.